Um, I'm gonna go through this kind of fast, so feel free to pause whenever you need to. Um, so the first part of the directions say to just factor, okay? So notice here, the number in front is not, I mean, obviously not the number 17, because that's the number of the problem. Um, there is no number in front here. It means there's a one there, okay? So if there's just a one there, we're going to set up our two sets of parentheses. And we're going to say what multiplies to be negative 10, but adds or subtracts to be negative 3, okay? So 1 and 10, 2 and 5 are my factors of 10. Well, I know it's going to be 2 and 5. So I'm going to put an x and an x, okay? And then I'm going to put my 2 and my 5. It doesn't matter. You could put the 5 first, then the 2, okay? In order to get negative 3, I would need a negative 5 and a positive 2. And positive 2 times negative 5 is, in fact, negative 10. So this is factored. So my final factor answer should have two parentheses multiplied together, okay? Now this one is a little different because there's a number in front, Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that number to the back number. So 3 times 12, which is negative 36, because there's a negative there. So I'm looking to see what multiplies to be negative 36, but we'll add or subtract to be negative 5. So you got 1 and 36, 2 and 18, um, 3 and 12, 4 and 9. So 4 and 9 are going to be my thing. If you can think of it right off, you don't have to write all the factors out, but sometimes that can be helpful. So when we have a number in front, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to bust this negative 5 up into negative 9x and positive 4x, because negative 9x plus 4x is negative 5x. And then we're going to bring these other pieces down. So we have 3x squared minus 12. Okay. Then, because there's four terms, we're going to go ahead and break them into groups. So this is what we call factor by grouping. Okay. So then we're going to look at each piece individually. What's in common with these two? Well, 3 can go into both 3 and 9, and there's an x in common with both of them. So I'm going to factor out a 3x, and then I'm going to have x minus 3, because I'd have 1x left from the x squared, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. I'm going to look at this parenthesis. I'm going to say, okay, I can pull out a 4. So then I'm going to be left with x minus 3. Now I know I did this right because x minus 3 and x minus 3 match. So that's my first parenthesis. And my second parenthesis is going to be the leftovers, which would just be 3x plus 4. Again, I know I'm done because I have two parentheses multiplied together. Okay, It's not just an x and an x this time. It's an x and a 3x, and that will happen to you occasionally. All right. <clears throat> Next one. This one I see that there is a 1 in front, so I can just go ahead and set up my two parentheses. I'm going to say x and x. I'm going to say what multiplies to be 56, but adds or subtracts to be 15. I know that that is 7 and 8. Um, so I'm going to have a 7 and an 8 here. I want a positive 15, so I need both of those to be positive. A positive 7 and a positive 8 gives me a positive 56 when I multiply. Okay. All right, this one, we're back to a number in front, so we're going to go ahead and multiply this back. So I'm looking at negative 30. Um, and if we do that, so 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10. So 3 and 10 are going to give it to me. So I'm going to bust this up. This would be a positive 10x and a negative 3x. Again, it doesn't matter which one goes first. It'll work either way. And bring down those other two terms. Because there's four terms, I can factor by grouping. I need to make sure I take that sign in front. <clears throat> so I'm going to look at these first two terms. I'm going to say what's in common with them. That would be 2x. I'm going to have x plus 5 left over. I'm going to look at what's in common here, which would be negative 3. And x plus 5 is left over. I wanted to take out the negative because I could see that this parenthesis had all positives. Again, I know I'm on the right track here because x plus 5 matches x plus 5. And 2x minus 3 is my leftover pieces. So that goes in the second parenthesis. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this one again. So 4 times, or I'm sorry, 3 times 48 is 144. So we are going to think of all the factors of 144, which I know 12 and 15 multiply to be 144. Now I would need both of those. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'm thinking of a different problem. So 3 times 48 is 144. I don't want 12 and 15. That 12 and 12 is that. 
144 divided by 15 is 9.6. So this would be 12 and 12, not 12 and 15. My apologies. Uh, 144 divided by 13. Nope. 144 divided by 11. 9. 9 and 16 is 1. 144 divided by 8. 8 and 18. But that won't help. I can go bigger. 144 divided by 15. 144 divided by 16. 17. <clears throat> nope, I already got 18 and 8. Okay, um, 144 divided by 9, we already did. 144 divided by 8. 144 divided by 7. 6. 6 and 24, my apologies. I think that 8 and 18 is for a different problem, or the 12 and 15 is for a different problem. So, this is going to be negative 24x plus 6x would give me a negative 18x. Again, I'm going to bring my other pieces down. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and do parentheses, parentheses. <coughs> and we're going to say what's in common with these, which would be 3x, x minus 8. Here I can pull out a 6, so that would be 6 minus 8. These are in common, so I'm going to have x minus 8. And this is going to be 3x plus 6. Again, I have two parentheses multiplied together, so I know I'm on the right track. All right, looking at this one here, again, I have that number in front. I'm going to multiply it back. So this is 12. I need something that will be 11, so that's 1 and 12. So negative 12x and positive 1x. Bring down my extras. I'm going to go ahead and group those. So um, this one, I can pull out a 4x. We're left with x minus 3. And then on this one, there's nothing to factor out, but I can always factor out a 1. I need that as a placeholder. So since my parentheses are in common, I'm going to have x minus 3 left over. And the leftovers are 4x plus 1. All right, moving right along. Okay, the next question says find the zeros. So what that means is we're going to, instead of writing y, we'll write a 0. And when we have products equal to 0, we know that each piece can equal 0. 3 can't equal 0, so I'm just going to ignore the 3. 5x, or x minus 5 equals 0, so I'm going to set that equal to 0. And I'm going to solve. Add 5, add 5, so x could be 5. That's one of my answers. I'm going to set this equal to 0. Minus 4, minus 4, x equals negative 4. Okay? And that's it. Okay. We can see that this one is equal to 0, but it's not factored, so we're going to factor it. Again, there's not a number in front, so I can set up my two parentheses, an x and an x. What multiplies to be 14, but adds or subtracts to be 5, that's going to be 7 and 2. <clears throat> I would need a negative 7 and a positive 2 equals 0. But since it's equal to 0, I can set each piece equal to 0. So x minus 7 equals 0, add 7, add 7, x equals 7. And x plus 2 equals 0, minus 2, minus 2, so x could be negative 2. So there are two solutions to this problem. All right, now this one, we don't have it set equal to 0, so I need to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. I'm also going to add 6 to both sides. So I'm left with x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Now, because it's equal to 0, I can factor. There's no number in front, so I'm going to have an x and an x. I'm going to have 3 and 2 will add up to be 5. I need both of them to be negative to get negative 5. And negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, Oops. which is equal to 0. Now that it's equal to 0, I can set each piece equal to 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3. x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. Okay. Again, this next one is not equal to 0, so I need to get it equal to 0. Move that down a little bit. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Again, because I'm factoring, I want to make sure it's the x squareds, then the x's, then the constant. Okay. We're going to factor here. So we're doing 3 times 6 is 180. This is my 12 and 15 one. 
So we're going to have negative 15x plus 12x minus 60. And bring down my 3x squared. Now that I have four terms, I'm going to group them together. So I'm going to have 3x, x minus 5. I can factor out a 12, which is x minus 5. I'm running out of room here. Sorry, guys. So my factors are x minus 5 and 3x plus 12 equals 0. So I can set each piece equal to 0. So x minus 5 equals 0. So x equals 5. 3x plus 12 equals 0, so I'm going to subtract my 12, I get 3x equals negative 12, divide by 3, x equals negative 4, where x equals 5. So we have two solutions there. Okay, moving right along, same thing for this one. We're going to go ahead and subtract 5x, subtract 6 from both sides. We get 6x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. We go ahead and multiply this, so we get 36, which should be 9 and 4 to get 5. So negative 9x plus 4x, bring down our minus 6 and 6x squared equals 0. Uh, 